Greetings inhabitants of YouTube. I did not intend to make this video. I've planned three more videos, to complete my third set of five, and perhaps retire from making YouTube videos. But due to current events, there's been a change of plans. As of late, Birdie Wing just ended, and overall, it was a good anime series. Despite there being pesky foreground credits in a number of scenes, the show was overall better than Godzilla Singular Point. The plot, the world building, and the themes were all good, and best of all, the characters even Dowie were properly written. Yosuke Kuroda has proven himself to be a better storyteller than to Enjo. Drunk or not. Still don't at me. However, this video is going to be a direct response to a nanny tuber named Ashley. She was obviously disappointed with the show, because it didn't live up to the Yuri expectations, set by her pornographic brain. Enjoy. Hole in one. I think. I think that opening segment would have benefited from having a tripod. Birdie wing. More like mid wing. Or should I say, Birdie Mid? Wow! A cautionary tale of how to butcher all your potential because... Writers. Wonderful. This should be interesting. Let's dial it back a few years so you can catch a glimpse of what I'm talking about. Spoiler alert, she doesn't talk about anything that happened a few years back. The final episode aired today, and I'm going to spoil that shit because... Wowie owie, am I disappointed. Birdie Wing writers, you had one job. You get paid for, which means I can criticize the fuck out of this. Birdie Wing only had one writer. And he did have one job, tell a story that makes sense. Also, if getting paid hundreds of thousands licenses you to criticize an official screenplay, does that mean you can't criticize a fan's fiction, since they are not getting paid? So this is a story of about this girl here, Eve, short for Evangeline, Evangeline Burton. The show starts out showing her golf for money, doing all these underground bets. It's like this whole crazy golf world. It's pretty cool. And then, you know, we learned that she was an orphan that didn't remember her past. But more importantly, she meets a girl the complete opposite of herself. The raven haired model school girl that comes from money. Are you colorblind? Owie's hair is blue. It may not always be a shade of blue in some of the shots in the show, but it definitely is on the posters. And that last minor thing does remind me of this retarded my animalist take. Those two main characters are Owie, a Japanese girl, and Eve, a European girl. As you may guess, Eve is the one that is poor and Owie is the one that is rich, because that is how anime works. <laughs> So it kind of goes down like this. They play some golf, Eve gets involved in the Mafia, plays on an ever-changing underground golf course that changes to your heart's content, and there's a sad little story about how Eve just can't make it to play golf with Owie again. Great stuff. But surprise! She heads to Japan where she tracks down Owie and attends her academy. And guess what? The two play together and improve. Friends are made along the way, and the two aren't even allowed to sleep in the same room, because it would be gay. Much like Eve kissing Owie on the cheek and Owie wanting more. But then they're sisters, in the worst plot twist of all time. Except then, they're not. Great pacing, I guess. What? So a subversion is bad, when the subversion is eventually subverted. Aren't the best plot twists out there the ones that make sense? Because the twist that Aoi's father didn't turn out to be Eve's father makes perfect sense given the lore and backstory. And thankfully the notion that Eve and Aoi are sisters was tossed out the window, because it would have been like that citric abortion, citrus. And did I hear that last part right? Great pacing, I guess. What does the speed at which the story doles out have to do with the subversions? I thought we got coherent information over a sufficient amount of time. I only say that because no one wants them to be sisters. And why is that? Because Owie's dad turns out to be Eve's dad. We're in Spanish soap opera Telenova territory now. <laughs> and not Owie's at all. 
So don't worry, they're not sisters. This is why Eve can speak Japanese. <laughs> So Eve gets deported because of Aoi's mom and uh, <clears throat> she doesn't fight it. No, season two is largely spent with Eve trying to make it to a big tournament to compete again against Aoi and fulfill their promise of golfing together again. Very gay in theory. Not so much in practice. So what if it's not so gay in practice? Friendship and falling in love are two different things. Then again, that's your pornographic brain thinking. It's like a rushed Dragon Ball tournament arc. Imagine if you cut three-fourths of the fight and condensed each significant battle to about an episode and a half. In fact, don't imagine that with Dragon Ball. Imagine that with Dragon Ball Kai. You do realize Dragon Ball Z abridged has less episodes than Kai, and Team 4 Star was able to tell the story up to the Cell Saga more compellingly than both Toei and Funimation, right? Yeah, it's that poorly paced. I mean, even for DBZ, that would be too much fat cut off the bone. So much so that you don't have any meat left. And that's what this anime turned into, a thin steak cooked rare. You're paying all your time and investment and don't even get any lamb sauce. Do people eat steak with lamb sauce? <laughs> look at me, look at me, eyes! Not as pissed as I am! You fucking are! Donkey! Anyway, when they finally do meet, it doesn't really matter because Aoi has this golf disease, right? And she's had it since they played together in Japan. She's inherited her father's sickness. It was just latent. But yeah, she can't even finish the tournament and becomes Eve's caddy instead of her super competent caddy, Ichina, that she promised to be pros with. Does that mean now Eve was incompetent as a caddy? No, she did a good job all things considered. So Eve mentally competes with what she thinks Aoi's score would be. It doesn't make too much sense, but I guess it's a good motivational strategy. How does that not make sense? Competing with Aoi was what gave Eve that sense of fun that she admired her for. Because in typical anime fashion, each character has their own special shot. Kind of like Mario Golf, I guess. Okay! See, Eve had these moves called like the Rainbow Bullets, and they were situational and really cool, but she abandoned them to create her own shot, which is just a single move that destroys her body, physically. Eve didn't stop using her rainbow bullet shots. She used her signature blue bullet shot in the three year time skip. Did you forget that? He kind of forgot. And her rainbow burst shot was a combination of her mentor's golf and her father's golf. Um, to me on the golf course that just seems like she's swinging too hard. Cause I've done that and it's like, yeah. <laughs> How are you in the pros and doing that? Well, whatever. Um. Use a steel shaft, I guess, like the men do. Yeah, I got nothing on that. Anyway, Aoi's special shot is this shining wing shot that's like, in the intro, it's foreshadowed heavily. Her last name, uh, Amawashi, means heavenly eagle. So in the last episode, you know, Eve combines these shots, and it's kind of underwhelming effect wise. Hell no, that shining rainbow burst shot was amazing. She smacks it 320 yards, and still in her mind loses to Aoi. So she combines their shots and creates the ultimate goal. Again. Hey moron! Fucking moron! We saw that Eve's last shot in the open was a backspin, and in her mind, she tied with Aoi. What you just described is not how it happened. Which is what her first mentor Leo sought to do. This guy didn't go pro, but played the best around the world because he loved golf and he wanted to be the best <laughs> and find the best. He even played Eve's dad and that's why he mentored her because they made a promise. It's a whole thing. That's right. That's how much Leo respected Eve's dad. That just seems pointless now. That's where she got her bullets that she abandoned. 
Again, she didn't. So she creates the ultimate gulf and that's it. How can Aoi catch up? How did she still lose mentally or excuse me? Ty. If you caught yourself making that retarded mistake just now, why didn't you correct the same retarded mistake you made earlier when editing this video? Speaking of ties, then Eve's mafia ties make her lose. She's disqualified from the championship, the British Open. So not only does Eve not really care to compete again against the Lunar Empress Julha, whatever her name is, don't really care about her. You had not condone her caddy for what she did. Even if Eve's victory was taken away and given to her, she wouldn't have felt like she deserved it. Which you would think she would because Eve doesn't really lose, you know. She only cares this time about going after Owie. But there's a problem with that, plot-wise, characterization-wise. Please do explain how Eve caring only about playing golf with Owie is against her character, based on everything we've seen. I'm dying to know what- You see, the thing is... All the drama between rivals and foes in season 2 lasts about 1.5 episodes. It's like if Cell was introduced for an episode and was a threat for two of them. But you knew for a fact in those two episodes he wasn't actually a threat, but I guess he blew up Kaio's planet and killed Goku, so... Yeah. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. Sigh. Dragon Ball Z and Birdie Wing are structured differently. And there's a difference between an overarching villain and a monster of the week as TVTropes.org puts it. Yeah, Eve technically won. I guess that's good enough for her. Somehow it shouldn't be. And therein lies the problem. She just... And there it is. Then, after all said and done, she just abandons Aoi and Achina, everyone, for three to four years. How can you just leave your friends and love interest in the dark? Why wouldn't she be by Aoi's side when she's sick? She couldn't compete with Aoi because she was barred from entering golf opens for three years. And besides, Aoi's mother wouldn't let Eve go near her. What's the theme of this show? The show just ends with them golfing again after that time skip and meeting for the first time. And Aoi's mostly recovered and that's it. Is is the theme that some people are loners and a little rivalry is healthy? Because season two just goes, nah, your friendship and potential romance are a waste of time. Even though Eve was playing for Aoi the entire time and that's her sole motivation and she's maybe dying see you later b i'm off to what train despite just having train despite having the bestest most ultimate golf you could never attain because you're sick and will be off your game when we play i have nothing to say about that babbling i just left it there for context but the overall theme I got from Birdie Wing is not giving up on pursuing friendship, even if the world chucks obstacles at you. That sounds about right. She also cut her hair. Okay, great, I guess. Like Cora did in book 4. Did they- it, it almost seems like they had a season 3 planned and just, nah, shove it into 2 because- because you're not gonna get it. But even so, they could have written the last episode to not make everything so pointless i felt so invested like a housewife binging soap operas for no payoff not a tamadachi ending not a yuri ending we don't know if kuroda intended to tell his story in three anime courses but to be fair it does seem weird that season one had 13 episodes and season two had 12. having an episode 26 all about the three year gap would have been neat and so what, if even Dowie didn't have a Yuri ending? Writing is more important than Yuri. Just a rushed product. That makes Wii Sports Golf look like Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2004, baby. Or Mario Golf Super Rush like 64. You forgot everyone's golf. So, 
What was the point? A promise. Didn't Owie want to play golf with Eve and that's what makes it extra enjoyable? Yes, and Eve wanted to play golf with Ali, because it showed her the fun of it as opposed to financially supporting her adoptive family on a knife's edge. Seeing where the characterization lines up is where the entertainment comes from. <sighs> what happens when Eve doesn't want to because she wins? So what? You can play the same game with a friend again regardless of who wins. How would Aoi even beat their combined shot while she was ill and Eve was probably improving? Aoi doesn't just fall ill after one swing. She can play up to four days according to the epilogue thanks to treatment. Even Aoi by the end don't even feel like friends. Just people they kind of look up to. It's like if you idolized Tony Hawk because you competed with him once. Like you didn't even know him before. You just met him and played with him and thought like, wow, okay, this guy's really cool. But Tony Hawk wasn't Tony Hawk, he was Tony Dickhead and didn't care enough to check up on you while your baby died. But somehow keeps tabs from the shadows. Countries away, most likely. And I guess Tony doesn't even really like skateboarding, only does it for the money at first, but becomes amazed by your skateboarding abilities and flirts with you and kisses you and, and uh... ERRONEOUS! ERRONEOUS! ERRONEOUS ON BOTH COUNTS! Yeah. I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm just really unhappy with how this ended. There is a contest going where you get a signed poster for predicting the ending. I... kind of guessed it. Maybe three-fourths of it. Half? I don't know. And man, does it feel good to be right. You know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of Mary narrating at the end of Nadia and revealing that terrible ending. They're definitely inspired, but I wouldn't say it's a ripoff. Although Disney's defense was really half-assed. Instead of just saying they were inspired, they just shoved it under the rug and said, oh, they have no idea what Nadia is. Like, really? This isn't the first time they took from anime. <laughs> Season 1 had me hooked. In fact, I didn't watch the finale of Season 1 until Season 2 started so I could keep watching. I was so enthralled. I didn't really feel that way about Season 2. The tension just wasn't there. The pacing was very fast, but the story still felt slow somehow. Almost as though it was just taking the wrong direction. Which, it did. You have not highlighted anything that resembles a contradiction. So... Imagine my disappointment. I'm so disappointed. You have no idea, ladies and gentlemen, how disappointed I am currently. And I don't give a shit. I drew a short comic very quickly after work the other night because I was like, I want to get this in before the season finale. Hopefully something like this happens, but it didn't. Um, at least my sloppy art, this only took a few hours, still has a better plot than what happened. Why would Eve kiss Aoi's unconscious body like that? Or Mane wouldn't let that slide, not in the least. You see, I've just criticized your fanfiction for not making sense. All in all, I would still recommend Birdie Wing, particularly the first season. It reminds me a lot of Dragon Ball how early in the series they had to use a myriad of different strategies to overcome their opponents, which is exactly what Eve had to do. Whereas once she gets her rainbow burst, it's kind of just, I'm going to hit it really hard and my fairway average is not really going to go down, except on this one course, and that's just because of the course. It's like, okay. Again, she didn't abandon the bullets Leo taught her. Also, a lot of the fights, or excuse me, matches in the season, in season one just seem to be better animated and drawn, and there's a lot more tension, there's stakes. And the stakes feel like they're there. You kind of feel conflicted because you don't want Rose to die, and there's a third party at play that's just really evil. Catherine's evil fucker, you know, and it's great. I really recommend season one. I mean, who would have guessed that Rose was a cyborg with this crazy tragic backstory? Season two also had characters with backstories. Which ones you thought were better based on feelings is down to you. Um. And Eve 
you really think she could lose, even though she's the unstoppable shonen protagonist. Or at least she acts like it. At the very least, she's more of a proper shonen protagonist than this angry anchor boy. But that's the thing with the Empress. Juha just doesn't have any sort of stakes about her. It feels very underwhelming. Again, her character was wanting a fair game, while also going all out at the last minute of the game. That was what made the last episode exciting, for me at least. Like the real drama is what's gonna happen with Aoi, overall. Because she and Eve are the main focus. They are the literal heart of the show. And then there's the whole Mafia subplot coming back even though, even though, it was taken care of because guess what, Eve is actually the granddaughter of this big Mafia boss. That didn't stop Romelda from exposing Eve's ties, or as B.I. Tareen Goji calls her, the imposter. It's like, it just doesn't make sense if that happened. Makes sense to me that Eve would be related to a mob boss courtesy of her mother. I'm still, like, that is the most irking point of this, besides the fact, um, aside from the fact there's no kiss. Oh my god, who the hell cares? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how a brain rewired by pornography operates. Um, because if that happened in real life, you could sue the fuck out of them. And clearly Eve was upset about it. It's just... I could write a better ending. I think you could write a better ending than this. Eve's family wouldn't need to sue anyone for defamation. It would make more sense for them to track down the imposter. It's really disappointing, however, that the only real relationship in this show is heterosexual. Pierre and her stupid boyfriend. It's like, such Yuri, much wow. And you forget Seira and Rayus relationship. Alright, I think that pretty much sums it up. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.